Hey, what's going on? Kenan Harkin here, and today we're going to do something just a little bit different. We're coming to you from the Camp Kenan Studios, and we're going to go over three different species of tortoise that I think make fantastic pets. Now, they don't get big, they're easy to feed, and you're going to love them. As a pro bike rider, action sports announcer, and off-road adventurer, I'm always on the go. But for my true passion as a reptile breeder, I created my own sanctuary in South Florida. This is Camp Kennet. So the question I get asked the most when I'm at a reptile show or even online is, what's a species of tortoise that doesn't get big? Now today I'm going to go over three different species. They all happen to be animals from a more arid environment, so they're all going to have the identical diet. So we're going to start things off first with an animal from Greece, and that is the marginated tortoise. Now I hatched these guys out just about two weeks ago here at Camp Kennan, and they are a fantastic species of tortoise. Full size, you're looking at about 12 inches, but there have been some that have gotten to be about 15 inches, and those are considered monsters. So this is a small species, and they call them the marginated tortoise because on their marginal scoots, as they grow, these will flare out. Now there's some debate as to what that's for, and many people think since they live on the side of hills, rocky hills and such, those flaring of the carpatial scoots they actually keep the animal stable while on the side grazing for different grasses and weeds, leaves from bushes and trees, uh, and occasionally they'll eat a little bit of fruit. Now these guys, as I said, don't get big. They like it a little bit drier. However, in the southeast United States, they adapt very well. My adults live outdoors here in Florida all year long. This species does hibernate in the wild so they can take some cooler temperatures. Now, if you live in an area that gets extremely cold, like New York, New Jersey, the Northeast, somewhere up in the northern part of the United States or even in Europe, you're gonna find these guys are gonna have a harder time. Now they have a dormancy, but it is not a months long dormancy. Uh, Greece, the, the weather doesn't turn cold for very long. So these guys will go dormant for a month or two, uh, but they are just fantastic. Also in the summertime, it gets very dry, so these animals may also become inactive during that time to save themselves from desiccation or drying out. Now, as with all baby tortoises, these guys are gonna need uh, a lot of moisture, uh, water bowl, and a humid hiding area just so that they can have that nice smooth shell growth and combat against pyramiding. They will also eat a little bit of the tortoise chows, but just never feed one thing all the time. And when I do feed them some kind of fruit, it's usually watermelon or some cantaloupe. But again, all the species I'm gonna be showing you today are gonna to eat the exact same thing. So this species comes from the genus Testudo, and you'll find that most of the Testudo species, or genus, stay very small. And that's a good thing, because these make fantastic little pets. They're hardy and personable. They'll chase you around looking for food. Now the next tortoise I want to talk about is also related to the marginated, and that is the Hermann's tortoise. Now these guys are found in Greece, Italy, and then over into Spain. And on the island of Mallorca and Corsica, you can find these little guys, and each range has a different subspecies. I'm not going to get into that. I'm going to talk basically about this little guy, just the general Hermann's tortoise. And they make amazing pets. They're so personable. They don't get big. Eight inches is about the biggest adults I have. And these guys are your pretty much stereotypical pet tortoise. And I think they make a better choice than some of your Russian tortoises because a lot of the Russian tortoises, which they are related to, are imported. And in fact, there are many Hermann's tortoises that are imported. And I would say don't get an imported tortoise. They just never do very well in this country. It takes a long time to acclimate and usually they get sick and die. So always try and locate a nice captive raised baby. So this little guy had a funny story. He actually hatched out in the ground here in his enclosure, and I found him while doing some yard work. So it's fantastic to see that these guys are able to incubate uh, in the ground here in South Florida. They also hibernate, so this is a species that can take cooler temperatures. Uh, again, I wouldn't let these guys get extremely cold, but they can hibernate for short periods of time. So they are just fantastic little species. And again, the diet identical to the marginated tortoise. A lot of weeds and green leafy vegetables and flowers as well. So I love them, a great little species.
And then finally, we're going to talk about the Indian star tortoise. Now, this animal is from India, and I always jokingly refer to it as the Ferrari of tortoises. Now, it is not a Ferrari in speed, because I haven't met a very fast tortoise yet. But I mean Ferrari in cost. These guys are about $500. And I have to tell you, if you can find a captive raised baby, they are well worth it. This species gets to be about 10 inches when full grown. They have probably the most ornate, beautiful shell of almost any uh, tortoise species out there. The radiateds being another fantastic example of a beautiful species. But the Indian star tortoise is just spectacular. And again, you have to make sure you're buying a captive raised baby. This animal right here is so important not to get any imports. They just never do well. And these animals may be living for months with you and then they just crash. And when they crash, they go fast. But captive raised babies make great, rewarding pets that will live 50 to 60 years, sometimes even more in captivity. These guys are herbivores, just like the marginated and the hermit's tortoise. They're really a personable species. In fact, the adults chase me down for food. And they don't need a lot of space. You can keep this animal and all the animals I'm talking to you about in probably an eight foot by four foot tortoise table, which doesn't take up too much space, or you can build a really attractive outdoor environment for them as long as it's predator proof. These guys are a little bit smaller, so I worry about raccoons and other varmints trying to get them. So there it is, the Indian star tortoise, just an amazing little species that doesn't get too big, but is big on personality. And personality you can find on all of these guys. Your Hermans, the marginated, just incredible little guys that I think would make fantastic pets. Don't forget to give them a soak two to three times a week and always have fresh water available for these guys, even though they come from an arid environment because they do love to drink. So, there are just a few species that I think make fantastic pets. Of course, there's plenty more, and we'll investigate them in the months and years to come on Camp Kennedy. Thanks for joining me.